The next thing we need to do is detect when the player collides with an enemy, and when they do, the player should die and ultimately a game over signal should be triggered. Before we implement all of that, let's go back to our enemy script and grab a reference to the enemy's hitbox, as well as the player node. We can find the player node at the path slash root slash world slash player. Inside the enemy's ready function, let's connect to the hitbox's body entered signal. We'll use this to detect if the player collided with the enemy. Let's create the onbody entered function, and inside we're going to check if the enemy is actually active as well as if the body we collided with was the player. If both of those conditions are satisfied, we'll call a function called die on the player node. This function doesn't exist yet, so running the game at this point would result in it crashing if the player walks into the enemy. So let's fix that by setting up everything we need from the player's side next. First of all, head over to our player scene and add a new audio stream player node, and call it death sound. Drag the player death sound from our assets into the stream property. Now, let's go to the player script and get a reference to the death sound we just created. While we're here, we'll also need a reference to the player's collision shape node. Next, we'll define a signal that we can emit when our player dies. We'll call it player died. Now, we'll create the die function we called from our enemy script earlier. Inside this function, we'll do a few things. First, we'll play our death sound. Then, we'll play the death animation we just added. We also want to set our player's active status to false and disable our collision shape so that our player falls to their death for some added dramatic effect. We'll do that by calling the set deferred function on the collision shape and passing in the property we want to set, which is disabled, and the new value, which is true. The set deferred function will set the value of a property on a given node at the end of the current physics frame, which is ideal for our purposes as we only want to disable the player's collision shape after this frame is done. This is to ensure that we do not interfere with any other physics calculations that take place this frame, and that we disable our player's collision shape only when it is safe to do so. Finally, we'll emit the player died signal. Let's run the game now and see what happens when we collide with an enemy. As you can see, the player death sound and animation plays, and our player falls to their death, but the game world continues moving. Let's fix this next. We're going to add a new signal to our game script called Game Over. We'll emit this signal whenever the game script detects that the player has died. Other nodes will in turn listen for the Game Over signal and react accordingly. In our game script, add a new signal called Game Over. We'll also need a reference to our player node. Next, inside the ready function, let's connect to the player's player died signal and create a function to handle it. For now, we'll simply emit the game over signal. Scrolling back up to the physics process function, we want to stop the world moving if the player has died. Let's add a check to see if the player is still active. If they're not, we'll simply return early from the function. We'll also add this same check to the top of our process function too. Let's quickly test that this works by running the game and colliding with an enemy. Great, we can see that the player falls to their death and the world stops, but the enemy keeps on going. Let's make them stop when the player dies. In the enemy script's ready function, let's connect to the player died event. When the player dies, we'll set the enemy's active status to false, and play the idle animation. Let's test this now by running the game and again colliding with an enemy.
You can see that when we collide with the enemy, not only does the player die, but the enemy stops moving as well, just as we expected. If you've been testing your game yourself, you may have noticed that if the player falls off the edge of a platform, they'll just keep falling and the game continues. We want the player to die if they fall too far, and therefore trigger the same game over event that happens when the player hits an enemy. Let's go to the main scene in the 2D viewport. Under the static node, let's add another area 2D node and call it ground. For its collision mask, set it to only collide with the player layer, or layer 2. Now, add a collision shape and a rectangle shape resource to it as per usual. Let's give it a size of 3000 on the X, just to be perfectly sure that no matter where our player falls, they will definitely have to pass through the ground collision area. Next, we'll need to change its transform position so that it's below where our lowest platform will ever spawn. We'll give it a transform Y position of 2000. With the ground collision added, head to the game script and let's add a reference to it. Inside the ready function, let's connect to the body entered signal. For the function, we'll check to see if the body that entered was the player, and if so, we'll call the player's die function. An argument could be made here that this logic should be placed inside the player script, rather than the game script. Either way works, but I prefer this approach, as it means the player does not need to know that this ground collision area even exists. Instead, the game script can coordinate it. Let's hit play and try jumping off the edge of a platform. You can see that our player falls, the death animation and sound are triggered, and the game stops. Nice! Now that the game over signal is working as intended, let's add in a bit of UI to tell the player their final score, and allow them to restart the game when they die. Let's go to the main scene, and in the 2D viewport, underneath our UI node, add a new label node and call it Game Over. We're going to give it a message that says, Game over, you scored, percent %s points, press the jump key to restart. We added the percent %s placeholder to the text, as we'll replace this with the player's actual final score when the game ends. With the label selected, click the Anchors button and choose H Center Wide. In the Inspector, Choose Center for Horizontal Alignment, and underneath the theme overrides, change the font size to 30 pixels. Enable Font Outline, and set its value to 7. In the Scene panel, we'll hide this by default by clicking on the little eye icon to toggle its visibility. Let's go to the game script and get a reference to this label. Now, scroll down to the onPlayerDied function, and let's update the text of the label and display it. We'll do this by setting its text property to itself, but use string formatting to pass in the current score. We'll then call the setVisible function and pass in a value of true. Test that it's working by running the game and falling off the edge or hitting an enemy. You can see that the game ends and our score is displayed on the screen. Now that we have a final score appearing, let's give the player the ability to restart the game using the jump key, like the message says. Inside the process function, where we check to see if the player is no longer active, let's check to see if the jump key has been pressed, and if so, we'll restart the current scene. We can do this by getting the current scene tree using getTree and then calling the reload current scene function. 
Now, let's test it out. Run the game and trigger a game over. When we see the final score message, hit the jump key and the scene restarts. No more restarting the entire game to beat our previous score. Awesome.